What's up guys, this is Kensuke from KensukeArt.com, author and illustrator of our manga for dummies and figure drawing for dummies. So today I'm going to share with you guys the kind of sketchbook that I like to take with me when I go sketching on location. Now I've tried uh, quite a few sketchbooks in the past, but this one I found to be the most comfortable one to use. And it's made by a company based in Brooklyn uh, called Baron and Fig. Uh, originally a Kickstarter project that now produces their product in Taiwan. Uh, it used to be in China. Ideally, I would love to be uh, see it made here in the United States. Uh, but this is the first time I've seen a switch, and I look forward to testing this product out. So let's go ahead and unbox this product. Now, what I love about this company is they really take pride in their product. I mean, I just love how they package their their, their notebook. And while it is not cheap as some other products, the, the economy products you might see at art stores, uh, it's 192 pages, which is a lot more than the average high-end sketchbook that you will find out there on the market. So the measurements are kind of interesting. It's 5.4 inches by 7.7 .7 inches, 192 pages. Uh, how they came up with those numbers, I don't know, but it just feels and looks great in my hand when I'm drawing, even when I'm standing up and drawing in location. So here, 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 all, here is all the, the packaging and the materials. Um, and it comes in two different colors. One charcoal gray, this is the one that I have, and beige. And this is considered their flagship notebook, meaning that this is what they, basically what they stake their reputation on. Now the only thing that I will say about this is, is that while I appreciate that they included so many pages, um, it's the paper quality. This will not hold well with uh, watercolor or markers. If you want to, if you want to choose to work that way, uh, I I strongly suggest looking for something more with more more thicker watercolor sketchbook. What's really nice about this product is it, it opens flat. Now, what do I mean by that? Whenever I open the book to the page that I wanted to to open to, uh, the book won't collapse shut on me, which is very nice if in case you wanted to. Let's say, for example, put your product on display and then if you want to share with a friend of yours or if you want to bring it to a convention and just lay it flat open to show the people who are attending the convention. I think it's a great tool. So this happens to be my seventh book. Uh, I usually go through about two of these sketchbooks a year. If you're just starting out, you know, you don't need to you don't need to go crazy. Just one sketchbook is enough. So how do I approach my sketches when I'm sketching from life? Well, I'll show you. Let's get cracking. Now, because of COVID, uh, the opportunities to go sketching live with subways are more or less shortened. But that doesn't mean I can't share you share with you guys some of the experience that I go through. So this is a scene from a subway last week. I, I wanted to show you with you guys how I usually approach a sketch. Now, normally I would go straight from um, pen to paper. I wouldn't usually draw a rough sketch, but uh, I decided to try something different. Now, what I love about sketching from life, especially in the subways, uh, you can check out my Instagram at Kensuke Art. Uh, you'll find many of those sketches that I post. What's great about sketching live on subways, and I love doing so, is, is that uh, it, it forces you to be spontaneous and quick. You know, it doesn't. It, you know, it forces you to take risks and lines, and make them count. And you know, it, it helps you gain confidence in your drawing skills as well. It also challenged myself into drawing uh, different parts of the body in different proportions or compositions or different angles that I would never have thought about drawing them, such as hands, feet, legs, uh, the head tilted uh, ever so slightly to the left or to the right. A lot of people are playing games with a smartphone, so I have a lot of uh, sketches of hands holding smartphones, <laughs> which is okay. Um, Uh, 
another confidence booster in drawing the sub drawing inside the subways is it's never a constant i mean never a consistent uh, situation you know the trains are moving left and right there's jiggling left and right people are staring at what you're drawing on the side kind of giggling and watching your amusement uh sometimes you know the the, the subjects won't stay still they'll they'll kind of move around uh, or they might give you the evil eye if they find that you're looking at them too much. It basically forces you to commit to a certain action and stick with it. You make mistakes, that's okay. You keep on going, keep on drawing, finish that sketch, and move on to the next one. Now earlier I said that this notebook page just do does not stand up toward, uh, well towards markers. Uh, this marker that I'm using is a Kuratake uh, brush pen or like a semi-soft pen. This one, this one has doesn't cause me any problems. I think it's basically the markers, like the Sharpie markers, or that that um, really tend to bleed through. So as long as you're using, um, you know, those uh, microns, or if you're using pens, or even just um, ink on uh, using the brush pen that's fine and when I start out drawing I usually approach from drawing the character from the head or from top to bottom and depending on the character's pose if she or he is sitting up or down is sitting down or standing up I try to find what is the center most object of the pose so as long as I work from set from the top center to out you know, that, that will give me a pretty consistent proportions and uh, uh, quality. Glasses are another thing I used to hate drawing, but you know, a lot of people wear them on the subways, and now it's one of my favorite things to draw. Backgrounds are essential in putting your character in its environment. Otherwise, the character might be looking weird because it's floating in the middle of the space, uh, or uh, just floating up in the air because there's no ground on the floor <laughs> where the feet is. And another key I look for is rhythm. Uh, even the proportions are right, if there's no rhythm in the pose, uh, the, the, the figure overall feel will look a little bit off or awkward or stiff. Uh, so when I'm looking for different landmarks such as the shoulders or the arms, I try to look for curves um, that will help establish the rhythm of the pose, even though if it means I have to go back and redraw some of them later. Now people have also asked me about how do I approach folds uh, or wrinkles in the clothing. Now that's that's a tricky one, but you know I, I I hate to sound like a cliche, but it comes with practice. Just drawing over and over again, and as you start realizing the patterns of how they behave, and you realize that there are only oh about like four or five of them that are consistently follow the the rule of thumb, and based on that. You can build your own vocabulary of how they behave. So, for example, where, the, where are the tensions when, when the elbow bends? Um, what kind of tension does that create in a folding? And accentuate that as opposed to, for example, underneath her arm where the clothing is loose. You can just use one line, swooping line, to create that rhythm. That will get you from point A, the top of the shoulder, to the hand. And another thing I like to add in is angles in terms of how do I make the planes turn? Uh, you know, such for example, like the, the the top of the backpack, 
and with the handle of the back of the top of the backpack I'll use that angle to create depth in her carry-ons uh, her glasses her mask uh, there there's lots of ways that you can add that little extra slight tilt in your line to show that there's a dimension Now you notice also I'm working fairly fast. Now that's because just out of habit, you know, you don't have that much time to draw the draw the, the passengers or the strap hangers because you never know when they're gonna move. Sometimes I won't even get through drawing the top of the head before they start moving. But that's okay, that's that's why you have 192 pages in this book. So here's a good place to stop for a second. Um, now here's something that I wanted to show since this channel is focusing also on how we use Clip Studio Paint. I've taken it to myself to usually take some of the sketches that I like or I thought that I really wanted to embellish more. I'll take a photo of it on my iPhone and scan it into, import it into Clip Studio Paint. And from there, I'll make the adjustments and go ahead and digitally color them. As you see here, I'm constantly making tweaks to my design. Uh, since this is a pen, obviously I can't erase it, but that's okay. These are all mental notes for later when I go ahead and, and digital. So last week, I covered about time lapse. You know, if you haven't seen the video yet, go to my previous video I covered on how it works in Clip Studio Paint. Fantastic feature. Uh, and here I wanted to show how I would go ahead and apply digital colors to my sketch. So there you have it, a very short quick video on how I sketch, uh, what kind of sketchbook I use, and how I use Clip Studio to embellish it in color. Hope you guys liked it, thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and turn that notification button on to green so you won't miss a beat. Until then, in Christ's peace, bye.